Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Morning, church. Good, Good morning. morning. Oh. Now I gotta tell y'all, Bonnie duped me. <laughs> Bonnie told me, I ain't coming on to Sunday. So you can imagine my surprise when I see Bonnie sitting here. I was like, what? Bonnie's here today. She didn't tell you that. She, she did in my see. brain. She, she did. She said she would be gone for two Sundays and she was not in there. She didn't <laughs> say 11 o'clock service. Oh, you just going to do that to me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought yes, she was on yes, my side. Yes, I did. I did that. I know. His mom is going to keep him honest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Right. Good morning. Good morning. Aren't you glad we serve such an awesome God? Amen. You know? Amen. Aren't you glad? Yes, I'm glad. You know, every Sunday, you've heard, you've heard me say this before. Christmas is not just this time of year. Christmas is every day. Mm -hmm. You live with the elements of Christmas every single day. So these candles that are up here, they're beautiful, aren't they? I, I arranged them pretty well. I just want you to know that. Actually. That's right. <laughs> but the point of the nature is what these candles represent. These candles are markers or representations of four very important things. But I know what you're saying. Wait a minute. There are five candles, Pastor. You can't count. That's true. I can't. I take it. I go back to the media map. But here's the point. We have five candles here. This first candle here, this candle, represents hope. We talked about that last Sunday. Hope. What do you hope in? Some people hope they're going to have a good meal at lunch today. Some people hope that they're going to win the lottery. They keep hoping. I'm first in line. But the point of the nature is, there's a lot of people that hope on a lot of things. But do they hope on Jesus? When you read the Old Testament, the Old Testament, the writers of the Old Testament, they wrote with the hope that there would come one who was going to be an answer for a need that was desperately needing to be met. When you read Genesis chapter 3, you read of the fall of man. It's so beautiful because we've been studying the Revelation. And we were talking about this on this Friday. If you missed that recording, I do ask that you go back and look and, and, and take a look at it because it will tremendously be a, a benefit to you. But see, in Genesis chapter 3, man failed. We sinned in the garden. And because we sinned, guess what? We had no hope. Why? Because we were dead to rights in our sin. But thanks be to God in Christ Jesus. Because Jesus says, I will meet you on a hill called Golgotha or at Calvary. And I will pay this debt in full. Yeah. That's your hope. The second one we're going to like today is peace. And I know some of y'all saying, man, I want a piece of cake. Or some of you are saying, I just want some peace and quiet. That's why some people send their kids to church. And they don't go. Because they say, I want some peace and quiet. And I'm going to send them to the church and they can deal with it. And I can get some peace and quiet. Is that the peace that they're talking about? Mm -hmm. No. The peace that we got is this. See, we were at odds. We are at odds with God. Why? Because of what we did in the garden. We're at odds with him. But aren't you glad that today we're going to talk about 
something very special that happened. The reason we have hope, this also lends itself to the reason we have peace. Now, something interesting about what we're going to do today is I'm going to ask somebody, since they're not here today, they don't know that they're going to do this, but I'm about to ask them to do this because they're not here. You know, you said they're not here. They're not going to be here. They wouldn't be here. Ask Ms. Bonnie mm -hmm. if you'll please come and light our two candles today. This pink candle is normally the candle which is for love. But we started this candle as hope. Why? Because you can't have hope and you can't have peace and you can't have joy and you can't have love if you don't start with it. And why is that? Because you can't have any of those unless you have Christ. So if you please, we'll light this candle and this candle. You see how she did that all effortless and nice? Yeah. Y'all see me <laughs> fumbling, stumbling, and... <laughs> Let's pray and we'll get started. Amen. Father God, thank you for another wonderful day. And thank you for the many blessings that you give. And Father, as we come here today, God, we are so overjoyed to know, Father, that we have a song. And there's a song that we sing, dear Father Lord, and it's not because of anything we've done but it's because of what you have done for us. Father, you have given us your peace. And Father, thank you, dear Father, that you give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you that you also give us a love that surpasses all understanding. And Father, as we come here today, we are so thankful, not only for who you are, but Father, for what you do. You bless us in so many ways. And God, Lord, we are coming before you today. Understanding, God, that, Lord, the world needs hope. But more so than that, dear Father, Lord, they need peace today. There are those, dear Father, that have walked in here today, God, that may have felt that they are at odds with you, that you hate their guts, that if they walk through this door today, that this place is going to fall down on them, or that they are going to be accused and that they are going to be beat down and hated on. But God, may they today know your peace. May they know your presence today, that in your presence brings peace. Mm -hmm. Father, thank you for the fact that when we come before your throne, God, everything else around us ceases. And we are just in your presence. And in the presence of you, there is peace. God, I thank you that you know us. And I thank you that you know us. And Father, as we get ready to dig into your word right now, I pray, God, that you're removing me right out of the way. And that you speak to your people. Speak, Lord, for your servants who are listening. As I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you turn in the book of Matthew to chapter 16, and we're going to be looking at verses 13 through 13 through 16. Again, that is Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 16. If you please stand as we get ready to read God's word. If you're not able to stand, I do understand you are standing with us. If you have it, say amen. Amen. It reads as follows. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am, that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
May God be praised and blessed by the reading of his holy word. You may be seated. Pastor gave you that 12, 29, 20. Ooh, look at that. I did. All right. Good morning, church. Good morning. Oh, come on. We can do better than that. Good morning, church. Good morning. Okay, I heard half of y'all. Come on now. I know that coffee about to kick in. Good morning, church. Good morning. Okay, okay, that's wrong. Brian's car made more noise than y'all. Good morning, church. Good morning. Come on, Martha's piano did better than that. Good morning, church. Good morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Aren't you glad to be alive today? Yes, sir. Okay, look at that. I got a scout back there. Yes, sir. Aren't you glad there's a song to sing? Amen. Oh, you know, I love songs. Do you like songs? Yes. Amen. You know, there's a great song that I love to hear. Y'all heard it today. That's my jam right there. I'm going to tell you, Crystal Aiken, a song about Jesus. Oh, that's my jam right there. Me and my mom, we used to drive down the road. We'd go into Bible study at, at one of our former members' house. Uh, Rita, we would go to her house and we'd be sitting there listening, song about Jesus, because you know she sing that whole thing, so we'd be in the background, song about Jesus. And she'd be singing out her lines, we come to the other end, song about Jesus. And then she would go through that whole song, what are we doing? Song about Jesus. I tell you, we, if you hear that song, you start doing it, you go get it. Everybody's like, oh, that's the song about Jesus song. You don't got to know any other words. All you got to know is song about Jesus. You do a little dance with the two people. Go like, ooh, that's your jam. Yes, yeah, song about Jesus. Aren't you, don't you want a song about Jesus? Amen. Aren't you glad there's something to sing about? Uh-huh. Yeah. Aren't you glad there's something to be happy about? Amen. Yep. See, last week we were talking about hope. You see, there's a lot of people in the world today that are needing hope. But there's also a lot of people today that are needing peace. They're needing to know the peace of God. They need to know that there's peace today. Do you need to know there's peace today? Yes. Do you have peace? And I heard, I heard some people say, I got a peace in my purse. <laughs> <laughs> that if things go wrong, I could, I could make peace real quick. <laughs> Now I heard somebody else say, put that back, Grandma. That's not this place. Just know. <laughs> Calm down a bit. Sometimes in life, we go through problems. We go through issues. And I need to speak for a moment. Y'all mind if I speak? Go ahead. Go right ahead. Yep. You see, today. I don't know their name. I don't know who they are. But they woke up this morning and their dad just hit their mom. And their mom just hit their dad. Their sister just walked in and slapped them straight in the face and told them to their face, I hate you and I wish you was never born. You're not a part of this family. Get out of this house. I don't know their name. But right now as I'm speaking, they're walking out of their house right now. And they don't know where they're going to go. They have no one to turn to. They have no hope today. There's a person today who's on drugs. And the reason that they're on drugs is they're trying to escape reality. Because it's so hard here. They try to get away from here so that they can find some peace. And they're saying to themselves, I don't want to use anyone. I just wish I had some peace. There's someone today. They're in a loveless relationship. 
They look their spouse in the eyes. But there's no love there. They're not even a couple. They're just two people looking at each other. They argue and they fight. And they say, I wish that we had love. But I also wish that we had peace. You see, there's somebody probably sitting in this room today. If they're not here today, they're somewhere today. And they're saying, my life sucks so bad. And I want to end my life today. And the last place I'm going to is this place called church. Because the only thing I want today is I want. Church, these are real things. And these are real situations. And the unfortunate thing that has happened today in the church is the church has lost sight of hope, peace, joy, and love. And why have we lost sight of that? Because we've lost sight of Christ. We are to be more than conquerors. In Jesus Christ. I wish you'd been in our Sunday school today. If you were in Sunday school, we went over Romans chapter 8 and we talked about this very thing. Do you know that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus? Do you know that? See, I know what 2 plus 2 is. I know what 1 plus 1 is. I know what 3 plus 3 is. It's 9. I mean, excuse me, it's 6. I turned that you know, sideways, so 3 times 3 is 9. Y'all know what I mean. <laughs> Here's the thing, guys. I know those things, but do I believe them? See, there's evidence that shows that 3 plus 3 Equals six. Why? How many fingers do I have? I got ten. So if I count to six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Does that, do you believe that? Is that six? Okay, you believe that, right? Yes. So here's the thing. As Christians, as believers, we have something that testifies to the fact that God is real, that he is active, that he is moving, that he is moving in my life, that he has plans, that he has things he wants to do, that he is the bringer of hope, that he's the bringer of peace, that he's the bringer of joy, that he's the bringer of love. You see, we've got these things, and it's called our Bible. And you know what? You know what's happening today? We don't read our Bible. Poses a problem, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. Here's the problem. The world is crying out for peace. Listen. The world is crying out for peace. Let's say this one more time. The world is crying out for peace. Do you mind if I say this one more time? Sure. Watch how I say this, though. The world is calling out for peace. There's a problem, isn't there? Yeah. What's the problem? We're not showing them the peace. Y'all got identity crises in here today. I see that. I see you need to be reacclimated with the one who died on the cross for your sins. The world is crying out for peace. But see, there's something y'all have forgotten 
because you're not actively reading your word. See, if you remember back in John chapter 15, Jesus said something important. If the world hates you, take heart. The world first hated me. The world loves their own because they belong to the world. But you don't belong to the world because I have chosen you out of the world. You see, you don't belong to the world. So why are you trying to identify yourself with the world? Why? Why? Why are you trying to fit into the box that the world wants you to fit into when God has said, I want you out of that box? And I want you to testify of my goodness, of my grace. I'm giving you the tools in order to do it. Church, there's a problem today. You know what the problem today is? Church don't read the word. Can't testify to something you don't read. Can't testify to something you don't know. Can't testify to something that you don't believe. I dare you to tell me that you believe it. If you believed it, you believe it. But how many times do you make excuses for why you don't read God's word? How many times do we make excuses for why we are not actively following God's word? How many times do we make excuses for why the things that are going on around us, why they're happening, why this is going on? You want to know why we're making excuses? Because we're trying to be double agents. We're trying to live for God, but live for the world too. Listen, last night, the club was popping, wasn't it? I know half y'all say, I don't go to the club. I went straight to sleep. My club is Club Baby. And when I got in my bed, I turned my TV on. I might have turned on my mute music, which is rain, and I went straight to sleep. If that's you, say amen. 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 <laughs> Come on, let's all testify in ourselves today. We know what we did. Mm -hmm. But see, there's a lot of people that went to the club last night. And they believers. Is there something wrong with going to the club? No. Nope. Nothing wrong with going to the club. It is something wrong if you're trying to fit in with what the world doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're doing the things that the world is doing, when you show up to church on Sunday, you're like, whoo, girl, Ooh, I need to go pray today. I did some things. What you did? Threw it down, picked it back up, went out and did some things. Ooh, you did? I got to sing in the choir tomorrow. Oh, even worse? I threw it down, picked it back up, I did some things. Ooh, I got to get out. Why? I got to preach that sermon in the morning. Did I just say that pastors be in the club acting a fool? Church, do that happen? Mm -hmm. Now let me tell you something about your pastor. He don't do that. He don't do that. Because I got a, I got a pit bull in there, mama, that's going to make sure that not happen. Amen. Even if I ran towards the club, she'd be like, I'm going home, I'm going home. Remember that. Calm down. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes, man. I'll kill you. Okay, I'll stay home. Church. Are you glad to be here today? Amen. Amen. I need to ask you a real question. I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you glad to be here today? Yes. yes. You know, they always say the one that says it the loudest is lying in hearts. I'm not calling you a liar. But the church sometimes is full of liars. Sometimes we say things that we don't mean. Have you ever sung a song that you don't mean? Brother Brian, we've said this before in studies, and I want you to testify to this saying. Have we not said before that if there's a song in there that you do not believe, don't sing it? Yes, we have said that. If there's a song out there that you're singing and you half-heartedly singing it because you do not believe those words, don't sing it. 
But so many times, what do we find that happens in the church? There's a lot of people that are singing, How great thou art! How great thou art! And on Monday morning, I don't know how. I don't know how. You say, Pastor, you remix that song. No. I just testify to what many believers do. We say that we believe in God, but do we believe in God? Do we? Do we? Do we? There was a problem that was going on in the world. There's a problem that was going on in the lives of people. If you're turning your Bibles to Luke chapter 2, Do you mind if I set this up for y'all? No, we're right ahead. See, the world was waiting in anticipation. We said this last week. The world was waiting in anticipation for hope. Oh, my friends, but see, the world was also waiting in anticipation for peace. And one day, there was these shepherds, and they were out. Keeping watch over their flock, over their sheep. And as they were out there, guess what? They was out there taking care of the sheep. And behold, a host of angels, host of angels, came out and started singing and rejoicing. And this is the message that they gave. Well, here we go. Suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Amen. I need to tell you something about Jesus today. And I need to tell you something about what we're talking about today. You see, I know what you're saying, Pastor. You have went in on us. You didn't call us liars. You didn't said that we're not doing this. You didn't stood here ten toes down in my face and called me a liar in regards to my relationship. I want to tell you something, church. I didn't call you a liar. God is. Because if I'm not following his word, and if I'm not living according to his word, it's not an argument with me you have it. It's an argument with God. Because he's watching your life. Do you know that God knows every move you make? God sees every move you make. He knows it. See, we think we're getting away on God. Can I say something real to that church? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes we think that God sometimes misses when we sin. That he blinked. And in that blink time, he missed all that sin that we did. And so that when we stand in front of God and God comes up talking about, well, you know, on uh, August 27th, you will uh, sin right here. Uh -uh, I'm God, you blink. I didn't sin, I'm good. I'm good. I'm Gucci. And God is little, oh, let me check my banks again. Let me see if I did. Oh, 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 see right here? That's when I blink. Oh, yeah, you didn't do that. Oh, okay. What? Oh, that had to work. You know what scripture tells us? God never slumbers. He never slumbers. Psalm 121, verse 3. God never slumbers. And he doesn't allow your foot to slip. Mm. Let me back up to verse 1. I set my eyes to the hills. For where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who is the maker of heaven and earth. That's Psalms 121, verses 1, 2, and 3. Aren't you glad that God is watching you? Aren't you glad that God is keeping an eye on you? 
So now I bring this very important fact to you. I know what you're saying. Yeah, as a believer, I'm glad God is watching me. I'm glad God is, God is doing that. But if I'm not a believer, man, do you know that God is watching you? Do you know that he's seeing every move that you make? And on top of that, here's something you should know. God keeps a record of all wrongs. Oh, my friend. Does that scare you a little bit? Mm -hmm. Do you shudder a little bit? But my friend, what if I was to tell you? What if I was to tell you? I got good news. What if I told you that? What would you say? Would you say cool? Would you say give it to me, give it to me? Would you be like, oh, I did whatever? Hmm. In Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 34, God tells Jeremiah, there's a new covenant that I'm going to do with the house of Israel. No longer is it going to be based off of who you were born for. But this one is going to be one that is written on your heart. It's written on your heart. There's a new covenant. You know what God told them? You know what God was telling Jeremiah? Jesus. The new covenant is found in Christ. I said before, we're here to talk about peace. So you must understand something before we get to understanding peace. You need to understand in Sunday school this morning and in most of our studies, we talk about this. I talk about this exhaustively. And when I say exhaustively, I like to talk a lot. So if half the church goes, oh, Lord, you know why? Because I love to talk so much. But here's something that I say. I usually say this, that when you have Bible study, you have to study the Bible. So you study the Bible to have Bible study. You study the Bible to have Bible study. You study the Bible to have Bible study. Are you ready? for this part of the study when we study the Bible. Are you ready? Yes. We are guilty of sin. Mm -hmm. We are guilty. Guilty, 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 guilty. 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 And the righteous judge who is God himself sits on the throne and he looks at us and he says, you are guilty. Mm -hmm. But if that's where the story ended, there's no hope, right? I need a solid answer from everybody here. There's no hope, right? Mm -hmm. Enters the greatest defense attorney. When we come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and are washed in the blood of the Lamb, the righteous judge who sits on the throne looks at us and says, Not guilty. I'm covered in sin. I'm covered in it. Church, I'm you don't mind if I call you church? No, no. Do you mind if I call you friends? Go ahead. Do you mind if I call you beloved? Go ahead. I'm covered in sin. I'm covered in it. It covers me. I'm marred and messed up on my own. <clears throat> but thanks be to God mm -hmm. through Christ Jesus our Lord that through his blood I have been remade. I have been redeemed. I have been restored. I have been rebuilt. I have been repurposed. And what is my purpose today? To love God with all my heart, my soul, my mind, and my strength. And here's the second part. It's just as important as the first. To love my neighbor as 
myself. How am I supposed to love my neighbor? I'm supposed to bring them hope. I'm supposed to bring them peace. I'm supposed to bring them joy. I'm supposed to bring them love. And how do I bring that? When I show and give them Christ. I need to be more like Christ and less like me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. So why does the church today have an identity crisis? The first point that we have today, the bringer of peace. Jesus is the bringer of peace. You see, it is through Jesus that we have peace. And do you understand what the problem is? We are at war with God. When you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, when you have not accepted God's free gift of salvation through Christ Jesus, we are at war with God. And let me tell you something about being at war with God. You're not going to win. Uh, if I could call him right now, he already here. But if I could call him right now and ask him, can you be God? He would tell you, no. You know what I'd be calling? Satan himself. Why would I be calling Satan himself? He tried to take God. Did he not? Yes. That's why we have Satan. Why? He was Lucifer before. He was an angel. But an angel tried to do a coup in heaven. Y'all know what a coup is? Mm -hmm. That's when you try to take over. He tried to take over that young what? Mm -hmm. Nuh-uh. Yeah. He thought he could do it. He told the angels, hey, watch me do it. Watch me do it. You know what Jesus said when he was talking with the disciples one day? He said this, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. He thought he could be God. Wait a minute. He thought he could be my daddy. He thought he could be my daddy. You know who my daddy is? God. Why? Because through Christ Jesus, I have the ability to call God Abba, Father, Dad. If I don't have a relationship with Christ Jesus, do that. You can't call him daddy. You can't call him Abba. You can't call him father. You know why? Because you're not his. See, before you were a child of God, you were a child of the devil. You were one in the world. But did y'all miss what I said not that long ago? Christ said, if you belong to the world, then the world would love you. But the world hates you because you don't belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of it. Oh, church, do you love God? Amen. Do you? Come on, come on. <laughs> come on, we can't sit like bumps on the log. <laughs> You can't sit there and be quiet today. Do you love God for what he's done? Amen. Yes. Come on, church. Are you that scared? Are you scared today? See, they're scared and they're scarred. Are you scarred today? No. You must be because, listen, these are things that are fundamental truths. You believe them, right? Amen. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Yes. Then you should believe it. And if you believe it, you should affirm it, right? Yes. Firm it, claim it, right? Do you claim victory in Jesus? Victory. Yes. Do you claim victory in Jesus? Yes. Amen. Do you claim victory in Jesus? Amen. Listen, church, do you claim victory in Jesus? Amen. Then why are you walking around like you defeated? Why are you sitting here today like you defeated? Well. Why are you quiet like you defeated? Are you that scared of Satan? Is he sitting right next to you today? Is he sitting in your lap today, kicking his feet? Is he saying, this is the best seat in the house today? Or is he sitting on the throne of your heart today? Hmm. Or even worse, are you sitting on the throne of your heart today? 
see you afraid and you don't answer when you realize I've done wrong. See, today, church, the church has a problem. What's the problem? We've forgotten about hope. And we've forgotten about peace. And here's the thing. How do you forget about hope? And how do you forget about peace? When you forget about the one who is the bringer of hope and peace. Church, I know I probably will not be your pastor long if I keep doing this to you. I know. Why? Because there are many churches that don't want to hear what they're doing wrong. Starting from their pulpit all the way to the very last pew. But I praise God that God has placed me here with you because I'm man enough to tell you that sometimes even your pastor struggles. And your pastor forgets sometimes. Now I know what you're saying. Wait a minute. If you say that, are you giving me a pass? <laughs> no. Because if I'm going to hold you accountable, I have to hold me accountable too, don't I? Mm -hmm. And if I hold me accountable, what do I expect y'all to do? Come on. Why are you sitting there scared? Come on. Y'all got to hold me accountable, right? right? Are we not brothers and sisters in Jesus yeah. Christ? Yeah. No, no, no. Don't answer that. Don't answer that. Y'all scared. <laughs> y'all scared today. No, not. Satan got your tongue today. You can't talk today. You came into God's house. Listen, you came into the place where God's name resides, and you scared today? You coming before his throne room today. You done came into his throne room. Are you not sitting on the seat of your father? Are you not sitting on his lap today? Are you not sitting with your daddy today? And you telling me that Satan got you that scared? He defeated. Yes, he He's a liar. Yes, right. He's defeated. Yes. Why don't you tell him that? You know why? Because you're scared. You're scared. You know what you're scared of? What if I actually let go and let God do what he wants to do in my life? Our sermon series is Ignition. And the reason why they say there's something you should never do. You know what it's called? Poke the bear. You know what they say you should never poke the bear? Because you'll provoke the bear. Well, you guess what? Y'all pastor is a moron. And you want to know why I'm a moron today? Because y'all are bears. And I've got a stick. And I'm poking the bear today. Why am I poking the bear? Because God's got a message for you today. And I want you to hear it. You are called by God to be his ambassador. You are called by God to be his witness. You are called by God to be used by him in something that he has created in advance for you to do. But you're not doing it because you're afraid of the devil who's defeated. Church, and it started from the pulpit go into the very last period. And I know what you're saying. What? Is he saying that he's afraid of Satan? No. I'm not afraid of him. You know who I'm really afraid of? Me. You know why I'm afraid of me? <coughs> because you know his other name? He's the great suggestion. He has no power to do anything to me. Just suggest. But how good is he that he's got the church tightened in God's house and they won't even say amen in his church? How good is he? Do you understand? How good is he that during song service, you got your mouth shut when you should be giving praise and glory and honor to your Father that's in heaven. Mm -hmm. But you won't do it. Why? Because you're scared. What if people find out I don't love Jesus as much as I say I do? 
You know the most honest person in the world is one that says the truth. The truth is, do we love God more than he loves us? Or does he love us more than we love him? So if we know that he loves us, now listen, i got to say something. And please listen, right? Y'all just said a very powerful point. Can y'all hang with me? Please, can you hang with me? Yeah. Can you hang with me? Please hang with me. Mm -hmm. You just heard that God loves you more than you love him, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you willing to try to bridge the gap? Are you willing to try to love him a little bit more? Are you trying to love God a little bit harder? See, some of us today came in here today and we're liking God, but we're not loving him. Look at your life today. There's something we talked about in Sunday school. We talk about this in our, in our Bible study times. Do not generalize your answers today. Now today it's time to internalize what you're doing. Look at yourself and understand this today. Answer this question. God, do I love you today or do I just like you? And if I just like you, do I like you or do I just know your name? And if I just know your name, do I just show up on Sunday? I just show up on here so I can check a box. You got to an answer for yourself today. Where do you stand with God? You know why? Because Jesus said, I will separate the sheep from the goats. You know who the goats are? They think they're sheep. They hang with the sheep. The goats think they're sheep. They got horns. They go around hitting people. Well, see, it's funny because when you look at a sheep and a goat, both of them got horns. Both of them have, have wool. Both of them get milk. Both of them do those things. Both of them taste good. There was a goat out there that said, no, not me. But the point of the nature is, you look at a goat, you look at a sheep, and you don't know, you might not know they're the same. You might not know their difference, because you might think they're the same. But Jesus said, I will separate the sheep from the goats. What does that mean? It means this, folks. Some of us today do not have peace in our life. Some of us do not have hope in our life. Some of us do not have joy in our life. Some of us do not have love in our life. And the reason that we don't is because it's simple. I've deduced it. You probably have now too. You just don't want to hear this. Because you don't have Jesus in your life. And if you don't have Jesus in your life, you can't speak on something you don't have. Understand that? You can't call yourself something that you don't have, that you're not living. So this question was asked this morning in Sunday school. If that's the case, how do I change it? Church, I got a question for you today. How do we change that? How do I be, how do I become a bringer of peace? How do I become a bringer of hope? How do I truly become a witness for Jesus Christ? Well, the first thing is I have to come to Christ. Don't I? See, in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus answered and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. You see, church, one of the most unfortunate things that's happening today in the church is the church is not reading the Word of God. It's a shame that there are people today that are dying out of this world and have never read the book of Revelation. And when asked why they don't read the book of Revelation, their answer is, because it scares me. Why? Why does the book scare you? We're going through that right now as a church, are we not? Friday nights, we're going through it. Now, here's the thing that I would say, and you wouldn't like this one. How many of you have been on one of the recordings of that 
study through Revelation. You probably raise your hand. How many of you were on it last week? Hands start dwindling. Folks, we say that we're committed to God's word. We say that we want to grow and be sharers and doers of God's word. But you can't do something you're not following. James said, don't just be a hearer of the word, be a doer of the word, right? How can I do something and not read? How can I read something and I don't even know where it is? You know the most pathetic thing to have? Yeah, I said, I said the word pathetic. You know the most pathetic thing that happens is when believers are showing up to church without their body. I believe that this is God's holy word. Amen. And I believe that this has everything I need in order to live a life that is pleasing to God. Amen. Amen. Then I must not want to please God if I can't even find my life. Right? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? I'm just, I'm asking the question. Is that what we're saying? Church, is that what we're saying? If I'm not actively reading God's word, then I don't care about God. Is that what I'm saying? If I'm not spending time in study with God, am I saying that I don't care? Come on, let's get our identities right today. Let's, let's, let's get out of our feelings today. Let's really think about it. Let's really look at our situation. Because I came to make peace today. <clears throat> Wait a minute, I didn't come to make peace. God came to make peace today, and it comes through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And guess what? Christ has sent me here today to tell you about how to have peace through Jesus. And I'm doing that today. And I know what some people are going to say. Well, you're doing a crappy job. You over there accusing people. Over there yelling, screaming, waving your hands like one of those inflatable things. Well, guess what? If it gets your attention and it stops you from heading down the pathway to hell, I'll wave my hands and yell all I need to, right? Right? Mm -hmm. But church, if we keep a closed mouth, mouth shut, unaffected by God's word, who are we helping? No one. We are not double agents. You are bought with a price. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, you are bought with a price. You belong to Jesus. Do you know that? It's time for us to live like more so than that, it's time for us to act like it. It's hard when you say act like it because this is what the church is doing today. You know, they should, they, whoever makes the, y'all know the, the Emmys, you know, the Oscars, the Academy Awards, you know, the statue they give? They need to go to every church in America and give one of those statues to the church. Today. You know why? Because we've got a lot of actors some really good actors. And what are they acting like? They have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And guess what they're going to do when they die? Bust hell. Why? Why? Because Jesus said, I will separate the sheep from the goats. Christ came to bring peace. Christ came to bring peace. Why? Because we sinned in the garden. And that sin covers us. Remember when I said I was covered in sin? I'm covered in sin. I am. But I also am covered in the blood of Christ Jesus because I have accepted the free gift of God. And because I've accepted that free gift, I have peace. To the person, to the brother, to the sister, to the person today who's sitting in the church and they thinking, I'm taking, I'm going to take my life. You need to give your life to Jesus. Why? Because he is the giver of peace. There is hope 
found in him. There is joy found in him. There is love found in him. There is a family found in him. To those who have accepted the free gift of God, to those who accepted Jesus Christ, God gives us the right to be called children of God. You know the thing about children? That means that you have brothers and sisters. Are you a brother and sister in Christ? Are you a brother in Christ? Are you a sister in Christ today? Are you a good one? Think about what you've done in the last week. Have you encouraged your brothers and sisters? Have you encouraged those that are hurting? Have you sent a message to them? Have you prayed for them? Have you met with your brothers and sisters? Or have you forsaken? Forsaken? Have you totally missed it? Are you saying, I ain't got it? I don't know how to do it. That's it. Church, I'm calling it as I see it. Why? Because God's calling it as he sees it. He's got a lot of people that are calling. They're saying, Lord, Lord. But guess what? He's also looking at your heart. And if your heart is not for him, guess what it is? It's against him. And if your heart is against him, guess what? That means I'm not living right, right? Mm -hmm. Listen, let me tell you something. You can be a believer and be backsliding. You know what backsliding is? That's not doing what God has called you to do. You doing you instead of doing him. I want to tell you something today. There's hope. It's found in Jesus. You may say, I need to rededicate myself. I am looking at where I'm standing right now in God, and I am not standing in a good place. I need to change. I need to change direction right now. Let me tell you, my friends, the greatest peace that will be given to you is the peace of knowing that you have a future and a hope that is found in God. Do you know that God knows the plans that he has for your life? If you read Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, it tells you that, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of good and not of evil, thoughts to give you a future and a hope. Are you prepared for that today? Do you want that today? Do you want peace today? Yes, sir. It's found in Jesus. Mm -hmm. I know what you're saying. How do I get that peace? How do I know that peace? Is that what you're saying, right? Is that what you're saying? If you're saying that, then that means that you don't have that peace, that you don't have that hope, that you're looking at your life and it's not there. If it is there, then this is what you need to say. How do I share that? How do I share that? You see, folks, a lot of us know who God is, but we're not doing what we've been called to do. If you're not doing what you've been called to do, guess what you're doing? You're failing. I said, you fail. If you're not doing what you're supposed to do, you're failing. Teachers say that, you know, one of my favorite teachers when I was in, when I was a sophomore in high school, his name was Mr. Pernitis. Mr. Pernitis told me this. He said, everybody in this class starts off with an A. We was all, yeah, yeah, God, that's an A. Got me an A, got me an A, ooh, ooh. I, yeah, I did that dance right there. Your pastor did that move. You know what he said? He said, I gave you an A. It's your job to maintain it. Now, here's the funniest thing. He ended that year with a lot of people that ended with C's and D's, couple B's. There was one row A, wasn't me. I was in that C grade, yes, Lord. But I will, I will never forget Mr. Pernitis. Here's why. Mr. Pernitis told me something that was tremendous and great. One day, I was, as I was leaving class, I'll leave you with this. I was getting ready to leave class. I had a backpack that had a hole in it. So I had a little, I, it was actually a, uh, like a little uh, little uh, gym bag that I had. that had all my stuff in it. And I had a hole in it. Didn't know I had a hole in it. And I was getting ready to leave for class. And the book that I had was in there. It slipped out of my bag. And it landed, just so landed, 
right back into the into the book rack that's under the seat. So I went the whole day without knowing that that book was missing, right? Mr. Pernitis had this thing that he did. And at the end of class, before the other class came in, he walked up and down the, the, the seats to see if there's any books left behind because we had homework. Well, whose seat did he find an actual book in? Mine. I went home knowing I had homework, looking for the book. I couldn't find it. It wasn't in my bag. I didn't know where. I thought I might have lasted at the school. I didn't know. Mr. Bernardes knew because he got my book. And when he got my book, he took it and put it on his desk. I came into class. It just so happens that I actually happened to be the first one in class. Imagine that. <laughs> Usually I was skirting in midway. I was going to say right before the bell rang. I know y'all. My mom does too. She was like, yeah, you better change this stuff. I was the first one in there. Mr. Pernitis said, Mr. Evans, did you do the homework? And I didn't try to lie. I said, Mr. Pernitis, I'm sorry. I don't know where my book is. He says, I know. I know where it is. He says, it's on my desk. I was like, I was relieved. He saw, he saw I was relieved, right? And he got a little perturbed at first. And he said, when you get a chance, look at your book. And I went, got the book, I sat down. And open to the section, I'm probably gonna cry right now because every time I tell the story, I do. I got to the part to where we were supposed to do the homework. And Mr. Bernardis put a note in there. And he said, Mr. Evans, I want to see great things out of you. But it can't happen if you don't try. You need to try. You need to give your all. And I'm giving you an extra day to give the homework in. That man never, never gives you an extra day. Never gives you an extra day. That man never does. But he saw something in me. He saw something in me. He cared about me. Folks, I want to tell you something today. God sees something in you. He sees something beautiful that he made. He didn't want you to spend eternity separating from him. He wants you to have peace today. You need to know this peace. You need to know hope. You need to know joy. You need to know love. More than that, you need to know Christ, who is the bringer of that. You see, church, we need to stop being scared of serving God and actually serve him. We need to stop liking God and actually love him today. We need to be the people that he not only thinks we could be, but knows we can be. Why? Because God made us to be something great. Why? For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he created in advance for us to do. Ephesians 2.10. It's been so many months since we had BBS. But I do not forget that verse. Church, don't ever forget that verse as well. You are something great that God has made. You are a testimony of his goodness and his grace. It's time to be about your father's business. It's time to do what he's called for you to do. God wants us to be the church. It's time for us to be the church. It's time for us to be his called out ones. It's time for us to be Christians. It's time for us to be Christ-like. It's time for us to be the, the, it's time for us to be his people, sons and daughters, kings and queens.
things of the faith. We are bought with a price. It's time for us to love God, folks. It's time. The time for playing is over. It's time to love him. I turned in the homework with Mr. Pernice. And after turning in the homework, I got a solid C. And I remember the last day I was in his class. He said, and I quote, you started off the year and you had a final. And it is over everything that you guys have done this year. But I'm going to do something awesome for you today. No final. Go on. Our last day of class, when we were supposed to have a final, we went home. We got to go, sit and watch TV, whatever. Because he forgave all that we did, every one of us. See, I had a C minus in his class. When I ended his class, I had a C. A student who had an F in his class had a D. A student who had a C in his class got a B minus. And a student who had a B minus in his class got an A. Why? Because he bumped that grade up. Why did he do it? Because he loved his class. Church, aren't you glad that God loves you? Because where we were before, we were failing. But God has saw fit to change your way from F to A through Christ Jesus. Are you ready for an A? Are you ready to be an A? Are you ready to share the DNA? What DNA? The blood of Jesus with those who need it? Then I just got one thing to say to you. Choose Jesus today. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for another wonderful day and thank you for the blessing that you did. And Father, we thank you for being the bringer of peace and bringer of hope the bringer of joy, the bringer of love. Father, thank you for Christ, who came and paid a debt that I could not pay, and paid the price that, Lord, he didn't know. But I thank you so much, God, that your love is so powerful and so great. Father, that you loved us before we ever loved you. Father, there may be someone today that needs to hear your word and needs to accept you today. And I pray, dear Jesus, that today they would say, Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, and I know that I've done wrong. I've been doing things my way, and I need to do them your way. Father, I ask that you come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, Lord, and become Lord and Master of my life. Thank you for saving me. For it's in your name I pray. Amen. Father, if someone has prayed that prayer, thank you. Thank you, God, for saving their life. Lord, you tell us, you tell us that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You also tell us, for it's with the mouth that we confess Jesus is Lord. And if we believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Father, for those today that are praying that prayer, thank you. Father, for those that are needing to pray a rededication, Father, I pray, dear God, the Lord, they would say in their hearts, dear Jesus, I know that I'm wrong. I know I'm doing things my way. And I'm not doing them yours, and I bought with a price. But today, God, I turn my life back over to you. I rededicate myself to the mission that you've put me on. Thank you, God, for saving me. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen.